Can you expand on metaphors and what they are? Metaphor is a term I coined to describe hyperdimensional, that is, fourth spatial dimensional and above, regular polytope shapes. In two space, there are three regular polygons, the triangle, the square, and the pentagon. In three space, there are five platonic solids, the tetrahedron, the cube, the octahedron, the isosahedron, and the dodecahedron. In space, there are, in four space, there are six such shapes, but in all dimensions five and up, there are only three, the simplex, the orthoplex, or cross polytope, and the tesseract, or hypercube. Just so, space-time is said to be a fourth-dimensional form itself, and thus hyperspace, the luminiferous ether surrounding space-time, is of apparently a fifth-dimensional substance. If one applies the black hole model of cosmology to this structure, then one will see that the fourth spatial-dimensional form that space-time itself resembles most is none of the six regular polytopes of that dimension, but instead a torus or hypersphere, the 4D version of the 3D sphere or 2D circle. The 4D torus is formed as a dual handle knot in topology and thus not counted as a regular polytope itself. Nevertheless, space-time is a 4D torus, and hyperspace beyond this, a 5D hypersphere as well. Just so, some distance beyond even this emanation of tachyons, faster than light speed, there lies, according to black hole cosmology, an event horizon bordering between our own local universe and the unimaginably more vast parent cosmos beyond and outside of it. So, however, if we do not see the actual regular polytopes as metaphors on any of these scales, where do they occur? I describe them as like lens flare, refracting 5D tachyons around the 4D mass shadows of 3D gravity wells. Metaphors are, most succinctly, an effect of space weather caused when the microwave background radiation is distorted into parallax due to the gravitational lensing of any massive or dense enough object in space. Since these 4D shapes exist as 5D tachyons both outside of space-time, above light speed, and within it, permeating all of space-time in the form of the microwave background radiation, they can pass through us as well as we exist within space-time, and we may experience them psychosocially. Just as interstellar space weather affects the ionospheres, atmospheres, and crusts of all the planets it passes by, so too do these 4D metaform shapes pass through and affect us biophysically, electrochemically, and psychologically. So, I have long posited, we experience the facades of these metaphors as emotions, a plane space disrupted and disturbed by wavelengths into the rhythmic cycling of moods. We experience the linear edges of these metaphors as trains of thought or lines of reasoning that lead sometimes closer toward and sometimes further away from the vertex corners of these metaphors, which we experience as peak moments, inspirations, and epiphanies. Of course, all this is merely my own musings and more a poetic observation about reality than a technologically verifiable scientific fact. Metaphors like the Tesseract remain a catch-all term for the interference of these higher dimensional shapes and forms in our own interpersonal reality. To the extent that 4D metaphors do not strictly follow the rules of Euclidean space, it has been posited in fiction that such structures could serve as stabilized wormholes, connecting one point in space-time 
to either a distant point in space simultaneously in time, or else to the same or another point in space, but at a different time entirely. If such structures can allow time travel, could these account for the appearances of the Ophanim in Ezekiel's description of the throne chariot? <clears throat> this also rears the question, moreover, if ancient aliens were really future time travelers. But that is a question for another time. 